Never before has the story been told this way. The story of the centuries-old relationship between horse and human. Cavalia's Odiseo is the world's largest touring production, bringing together 65 horses with more than 40 performing artists. Together, they create a spectacular production, taking us on an incredible journey. Through equestrian arts, stage arts, and theatrical effects, Odiseo immerses us in breathtaking landscapes, capturing the unique partnership of horses and performers. And now, the Bay Area has its chance to escape into the dream world of Odiseo. For the next half hour, we'll go behind the scenes and explore the magic that takes place under the largest big top in the world. We'll meet the performers and their horses and the creator of this one-of-a-kind experience. ABC7 presents Discover Odiseo by Cavalia. The show is a marriage, an integration of the performing arts world and the equestrian arts world. But it's done in a very modern way. We have 65 horses, almost 50 artists, including acrobats, dancer, musician, trainer, and riders. We call it Odysseo because it's tell the history of the relationship between men and horses, but it's a journey where men and horses are going to discover the most beautiful landscape in the world. In 1988, I brought Cirque du Soleil actually in San Francisco. You know, after I left Cirque du Soleil, I wanted to do something different. So I decided to buy horses and start to train horses in order to do a show. And I created Cavalia. Cavalia came here in San Francisco in 2004 and it's still touring after 12 years. After I created Cavalia, I wanted again to challenge the existing, and that's why I created Odysseo. Horses, when they scratch each other, they'll yeah. both scratch each other, so he's just scratching you back. Performing with horses, it's an indescribable feeling in the sense that you're with another living being. At the end of the day, they know what you've taught them, so when you get out there, that's almost like the test. You're just so proud when you see the communication that you can have together, and these horses are so loyal and so amazing. It's just being there and being with the horses. There is no character we have to play. We just have to be ourselves. And what we want to show, it's not performers, it's the horses. So we are letting the horses taking the whole space on stage, and we're just there to show them what to do and to let them be horses on stage. We show what is possible from that relationship, from how you can build it, and then we just give it to the audience. When I discovered horses, which was not my world, I just found that first, they're aesthetic. I think they are the most beautiful animal on earth. Secondly, they are very noble, because they never look after a fight. So I didn't want to do a show, a traditional circus where you hear whips and you see the animals suffer to do what they do. The horse, when they come on stage, and you can see because half of the time they're free, so they can do whatever they want. They're not attached, no ropes, no whips, nothing. And they just play. I thought, let's explore that world. Let's bring this world and, and make, mix it with the entertainment or performing arts world. I'm the eyes of Norman and the director Wayne Folks, so whatever they kind of saw, it was my job to direct it and help what they envisaged for me to then put it on the stage. So when we would go to an ice cave, for example, they wanted the horses to be on the stage, but we wanted white silks and we wanted angels in the sky. Creating that image that matches the, the image of the backdrop is very interesting, it's very beautiful. You know, we have uh, acrobats from Guinea and we are, we are in the African plains, so we get the, the African acrobats coming down with their drums. So we create all of this beautiful imagery with the artists, with the horses, and it all just marries as one. I am both a rider and an aerialist, so I am able to do both of those skill sets, which is, keeps it really interesting for me and allows me to combine my passions together. Mm -hmm. 
to be an aerialist is we pretty much just get to fly in the air and dance through the air. And the apparatuses that we use in this show are silks, long white tissues that hang from the ceiling, and we use hoops. And we do a really big hoop number. Um, it could include up to eight different hoop artists, as well as pole on a live human-sized carousel. It's really fun to be to be up there and, and you really have to trust your body and just enjoy the moment. The first number I do is called the Roman riding. So I have two horses that I stand up on top of while they're trotting around and I do that with five other girls. The feeling that I get when I'm performing is, it's I can't really describe it. If there's, there's no high, they can beat that. It's not a job to me, it's a life. It's just something out of this world. It's you and your partner, you and the horse. It's a partnership that it's hard to find anywhere else. What makes Cavalia's production of Odiseo, which is the biggest in the world, is, is the size and volume of its tent. There isn't one bigger on the face of the planet. We are behind the scene of Odyssey. Um, this is the biggest touring show in the world. The logistic is astronomous. What makes Cavalia's production of Odyssey, the biggest in the world, is, is the size and volume of its tent. There, there isn't one bigger on the face of the planet. What we're looking at is essentially two big tops that have been separated and filled in with free-span arches in between. So the amount of volume of space we have in here is truly fantastic. we traveling with 120 semi-trailer. If you compare that to Rolling Stone or U2, they have only 60, so that gives you the scope of it. You know, we arrived from Manitoba, and Manitoba is about 42 hours drive. I don't want the horse to suffer in the truck for 42 hours, so I prefer to charter a Boeing 747, them to go all in the plane. They travel first class. After five hours, they landed, they are safe, we bring them to a farm. They had just arrived from a, an equestrian center. They had 12 days of full rest, eating grass, I mean, being horses. To set up Odysseo, it will require about a month. We're standing on about 60,000 square feet of white vinyl right here. This fabric that will eventually become the roof measures a substantial amount of space. The hockey arena in San Jose fits inside this tent. You end up in a space that is fantastically huge. You sit in 2,000 seat bleacher and when the curtain opens and you see the depth of the stage, you, you have a hard time rationalizing how big it is from what it was you saw outdoors. So the, the, the space in and of itself is, is quite deceiving. And the show that unwraps around it is technology, it's poetry, it's the lighting, the sound. From beginning to end, there's, there's, a, there's a new element that comes. You don't get tired of whatever it is you're looking at. We're just in the process of uh, one of our major scenes and very, something that's very uh, unique to the show, which is a carousel, which weighs about 10 tons. This is our mountain. This is something that um, Norman Latterell really wanted in his, in his show, was a mountain to bring nature to the show. This is 16 tons of dirt just on the mountain here, and we build it with dirt. Obviously, we have to get the footing correct and the leveling really correct. So this is all in the process of being built. The end of the show, we fill the stage with uh, 40,000 gallons of water in one minute and a half, and then the end is just a big splash. Horace and, and the artists just have fun splashing the water. I call Odysseo the first 6D show ever existed. Um, so why is that? Because there's a lot of layers. Of course, you have the 3D in front, and the image we project on the back is high definition. It's almost 3D image, and the size of the screen is so huge. So we have developed that technology that you can feel that 
It's like watching a movie, but being part of it. At one point, we have canyons, and you feel like you're into a fabulous Western, and then you travel like that through the images. So that's why I call it the 6D show. All this is to create a dream world, where, as the public, you just discover probably the most amazing show you've ever seen in your life. Probably one of my favorite parts is so the guy, he like got off the horse and he went under it and then he went around and back on top. I think that was one of my favorite parts. I thought he was going to fall off because he was like underneath. The most challenging stunt in the show is when one of the guys is in our, our Cossack ring and he's going round at fast pace and he goes underneath the belly and he comes back over the top and he pulls himself over the saddle and gets back on. And the audience reaction to this is, I just went tingly now just telling you, you know, the audience just erupts, they're like, wow! You know, it's, it is great, you know, and it's, uh, it's very, very challenging. You have to be a very experienced rider to do it. Uh, but we have two guys that do it very well. We are inside the Adicio stables and I'm about to give you a behind the scenes look of the magic that happens here. The Odiseo herd consists of 11 different breeds of horses. Together, their beautiful movements create an unprecedented vision of majesty and grace. The relationship between the horses and their performing partner is incredibly special. A great amount of work and time goes into this marriage, and the result is a bond that can never be broken. Hi, Pumpkin. Hello, oh, I love you. You're so perfect. It's very special. I mean, the riders come in at 9 o'clock in the morning. They each have maybe three horses to look after. Um, and obviously, during that time, they really bond with the horse. And they're the horses that they'll generally work with during the show. Um, and you see that relationship develop a lot. And then that's the relationship that we want to see that we take to the stage. The Arabians I work with, I'm doing a liberty work with them. So it's basically a trust between horses and me. Um, I'm making them do a little choreography around me just by my voice and my body language. So I spend hours with them. By being gentle and building trust between us, then they are doing just what, what I'm asking. So right now we're in the stables. We have 70 horses here. We're actually going by our wash racks. Now these wash racks are not just any little wash racks. We have hot and cold water. We have lots of different brushes and tools that we use. We have hypoallergenic shampoo for the horses. So we don't use any harsh chemicals on our horses. As you can see in our stalls, you can see the little windows in between the stalls. That's because we want our horses to be next to their buddies. All of these horses are strategically placed to be next to their friends. Right now we're entering inside of our tack room. So in our tack room we have a lot of different types of equipment. We have riders from all over the world. So depending on where they are from the world, they use different types of saddles. We have dressage saddles, we have jumping saddles, we have trick riding saddles. And in those trick riding saddles, you have a European Cossack saddle, and then there's also the American style trick riding saddle. These would happen to be mine, because I'm an American trick rider. As you can see on our wall, these are all of our bridles. Here at Odysseo, we only use snaffle bits on our horses, so they're really, really nice, light bits for our horses and their mouths. 
We also have bridles with no bits at all. So they just have a band around their nose. And then in Liberty, we don't have anything at all. All we have is our voices to ask them to do things for us. <laughs> this is my workout for the day. <sighs> Carrying my saddle from one end to the other. This is an American trick riding saddle. Um, it has lots of different parts to it, and that's because this is what I use when I do stunts on the horse. So trick riding is when the horses are going from one end to the other, and they're running as fast as they possibly can while I'm hanging upside down on them, I'm hanging off the back of them, I'm jumping on and off of them, I'm standing up on top of them. So there's lots of pieces on here and different straps you can see to help me do that. Something that's really cool about this show is that we're really all about letting the horses be free and be who they are. We have a live band so they can follow the movement of the horse. If you came to the show every night for a week, you would see a different show every single night because these horses are really, really playful and they have different energies every day. And I know no matter what, this horse has my back. I'm a wardrobe assistant, so I help in the repairs of the costume, the upkeep of the wigs, that type of thing. And during the show, we bring the costumes that need to be backstage for quick changes. So we're at the backstage area. We help the artists quick change. Um, we have quick changes as quick as 30 seconds, so we have to be there and we have to be prepared with all the pieces. The artists can have up to six quick changes um, a show. So Spencer is wearing our post to fee or belly to grow costume. This is three of the pieces that we have, and we have about 350 costumes, um, but they comprise of about a thousand pieces. So her um, vest would be one, her shirt would be one, her skirt. So we have to keep track of all of this um, and our thousand pieces of costume, including shoes and rider taps as well. So we have an extensive list of everything, and uh, we have to keep it all in order so that we know what we have backstage, in the warm up, everything to get ready for the show. Well, the inspiration is kind of all over the world. It's a little bit colors from all over the world, um, and they wanted to make sure that the costumes not only stood out on stage, but because we have a humongous stage with lots of visuals, lots of music. It gives you goosebumps more than once. You know, you can watch a movie and you'll get that moment of goosebumps. During this show, you're going to get a lot of goosebumps. We have also integrated a lot of acrobatic. Um, some of the acrobatic are on the ground, but also some flying act. Like we have created some special way and designed special way to have flying act integrating horses. You know, we have uh, acrobats from Guinea, which is in Africa. They spend most of their time on the beach playing, perhaps in their acrobatics. We all dream one day of flying. We all dream one day of jumping higher, and that's what we get to see. Coming to see Odiseo, you're, you're going to experience a level of passion for horses you wouldn't otherwise see. You're going to see a level of acrobatics and stage presence that, that I think we've become accustomed to seeing. But once you mix that dynamic with with the horses, you end up at a different place altogether. We also have the VIP package where you enter to a, a kind of a very nice lounge and, and we serve a lot of food. It's, you know, it's almost a full meal and we serve dessert. And, and after the show, if you buy the VIP package, we call it rendezvous, uh, then you get to visit the stable. The show is enchanting. 
I think it's probably the best show that I've ever seen. It's really amazing. Once in a lifetime experience. I thought it was spectacular. We saw uh, so the first uh, Cavalia uh, in Chicago when we lived there about five times, and we're looking so much forward to another show. So when this came about, it was uh, instinct. We just bought front row tickets. Well, I loved it because I loved the water where they like galloped and walked and jumped all around, and the people holding the poles where they jumped the horses and people jumped the poles and where they stacked up with each other. Outstanding, completely outstanding. Anne, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's really unique because you don't get to see so many shows with horses and the people who are riding them can do pretty cool tricks. I think my favorite part would probably be all of the acrobats coming in on the horses with their long coats flowing behind them. The production values were awesome and I loved the way they kept all the horses integrated with all the people and, and the water at the end was a neat surprise. My favorite part was basically when they flooded the area with water and then they had the horses running around in it. It's like you're in a dream, you know, like the best possible dream ever. I don't know, I mean, you, I, you can't even imagine that this stuff is possible to do on a stage. You enter into a dream-like world. It's two hour and a half of pure joy, and it's fun to watch. Whatever you're four years old, 44 years old, or 84 years old, is, is just a feel-good show. And you don't need to be a horse person. Of course, the show is a lot about horses, but it's so spectacular. It, it's a total world that we have invented. I remember when I discovered my first Disney movie, it's the same thing. When you come to this show, you feel like you become a kid and you just enter to that fabulous world. You know, I think more we bring happiness, more we keep have our happiness, better the world is going to be. You can discover the magic of Odiseo right now while the production is here in the Bay Area. Shows are underway at AT&T Park under the white tent. Thank you for joining us.